Okay, welcome back. Another video in the series about the Cloud Resume Challenge. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to use CloudFront and setting up a CloudFront distribution so that we can attach a nice clean domain name to our S3 bucket. So I'm going to go through some a few different things about CloudFront. CloudFront is basically a CDN, which is a content delivery network, which basically means that it's going to distribute your content all over the world. However, we're going to use a little bit of a trick in this video so that we can get around some problems that we have about cache and cache invalidation, but we'll get onto that in just a second. But yeah, so this, this episode or in this video today, we're going through CloudFront, setting up CloudFront. Okay, so in this step of the Cloud Resume Challenge, what we're going to do is set up a CloudFront distribution. So point six in the Cloud Resume Challenge is DNS, which says we want to, let me go ahead and highlight this, point a custom DNS domain name to the CloudFront distribution so your resume can be accessed at blah domain name. So we're going to do this in two parts. First part, we will actually set up this CloudFront distribution and the second part, we will actually go through and apply our domain name. So if you remember from last time, so we have an S3 bucket, I'm going to go into it here, scroll down to the bottom and we can see that we have our static website set up and our S3 domain name, which says hello world. Now, of course, that domain name isn't super clean and we want to get a slightly nicer one. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do this using AWS. In this case, we're going to do that using CloudFront, which is a CDN. So what we're going to need for today is to copy this configuration into our template. So let me go ahead and do that. So underneath my website, I'm going to stick this here. Let me just format this properly. So what we've got here is a CloudFront distribution. Now CloudFront is basically a CDN or a cache, uh, which basically means that we have different servers all around the world that are caching our content, which makes it faster to deliver to end users and uh, just a little bit more performant. In AWS, that also allows us to attach HTTPS and an SSL certificate to our S3 bucket so that we have a secure site. So there's two main things to realize about this config. So we've got two things here. We've got the distribution config and we've got our origins. So within the distribution config, we have a couple of different properties. We have allow all for our protocol policy, which is just an HTTP, HTTPS thing. We've got our tar target origin ID, which we've defined an origin down here as well. Let me turn on my highlighting. So we've got target ori origin ID up here, and that's referencing our origin down here. We've got the TTL values of our CDN set to zero. So if I just jump back a second into the Cloud Resume Challenge, you'll see that there makes a reference to cache invalidation. So you may need to invalidate your CloudFront cache in the code as well. Now this would be true, but what you can actually do is completely um, allow CloudFront to act as a proxy to S3. Now, typically you maybe probably wouldn't do that so much in the real world. There, there are some cases where you might uh, because you're not actually getting the full benefit of using CloudFront and it, for its caching capabilities. But what we're going to do here is we're going to set our TTLs to zero. What that means is every time we hit CloudFront, CloudFront is then going to hit S3. So that is all of our configuration for our cache behavior. And we've got our origin behavior. Now an origin basically is the origin of our actual content for our CDN. So the CDN itself is just a server, it just sort of acts as a, a proxy, a CDN server. But in this case, we want to set our origin to being our website that we created before. So what I'm gonna do, I've now pasted that into my template. I'm gonna go ahead and actually deploy that. So make deploy infra and get that creating. Now CloudFront can take quite some time to create sometimes. Let's go and have a look at this in CloudFormation. I just need to put my password in. Let's go to CloudFormation. And that's now starting to create. Let's have a look. It's not started just yet. Bear with me one second. Right, so as we can see, we've got a create in progress on our CloudFront distribution. Now this can take quite some time. Let me refresh over here. We've got update in progress. Let me see the events and we've got our distribution create in progress. If I go to CloudFront, that's where we can see our actual CDN and we should see that it's creating. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pause the video here for a second and wait for that to create because CDNs can take some quite time. CDNs can take some time to actually create because as we said before, it's creating that content all around the world. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause here and come back when that is finished. Okay, so that looks like that's now deployed. Let's jump over into AWS and we can see status is deployed on our CloudFront. So if we go into that, if we click on the ID over here, we can see all the details about our CloudFront distribution here. And what we can see is that AWS will give us a domain name out here by default. So let me go ahead and open that up. And here we can see, so you've got this random ID here and then CloudFront.net and we've got hello world. So now we talked about before about the cache behavior of the CDN. 
and the invalidating cache. So let's go ahead and have a look at that real quick. So if we go back to our index.html, and we're going to change that from hello world to hello worlds. And let me go back over here and actually deploy that. So this is going to ask for my password again. Let's wait for that. Oh, there we go. It's uploaded. So what I want to show you here, so if I go back to my S3 website, previously that said hello world, let's go ahead and hit refresh on that, boom. Now we've got that saying hello world, but what about our CDN URL as well, our CloudFront URL, so go back there, hit refresh, boom. So if we hadn't set up our cache behavior as we did before, let me show you again, as TTLs is zero, basically what we would have had a problem there is our CloudFront would have started showing different content to our origin or our S3 bucket. And that's because the CloudFront would have then started to cache that behavior and the way that you can get around that is actually going into CloudFront and you go over into invalidations and you can invalidate your, your cache values. So in, in this case, what that would mean is going back to the origin and fetching, fetching new content. Now you can configure all sorts of different bits and pieces about CloudFront, how it caches and different types of behavior. It's a very big service and does all sorts of different things, but this is a very sort of primitive and simple way of just getting that set up for our specific use case. Okay, and that should be everything for this video. Now we've got CloudFront set up. However, we've got another unique ID URL, which isn't exactly what we want. But in the next video, we'll be getting onto the Route 53 part where we'll be assigning the Route 53 record, which is our domain name, to our CloudFront distribution so we can have a nice uh, clean domain name uh, in our URL. So see you in the next video.